Okay, welcome back to this tutorial series on algorithmic trading and investing with the Darwin API. If you've been following along so far, then you've seen that we've been creating base classes and subclasses for each API and sub API component. And so far, we've covered accessing scores and quotes via the Darwin Info API, created base classes for indicators, created actual indicators, that subclass from those base classes, we've gone ahead and run some tests, plotted some results, and done some exciting things like that, all in our effort to build towards portfolio construction eventually. To construct a portfolio, of course, we need a universe of assets, and this, in this case, we need a universe of Darwin assets. Therefore, today we're going to cover how to download and maintain a universe of Darwin assets um, periodically. This, is, this information is available through the Darwin Info API once again. So if we head over to the Darwin Info API on api.darwinx.com, subsequently click API console, the very first endpoint you see in the list at the present time is forward slash products, and it's a get type request. This endpoint takes three parameters. Status, which is the which is one of active, pending, deleted, or all, the default value being all. So if you execute this query as is, you will get all manner of Darwin's returned to you, active, pending, deleted. It will be a very large list. Um, page that uh, by default is zero. This allows you to paginate your query so that on the first run, if you'd like to download all Darwin assets, you can page through each of these, as I'll describe to you shortly each of the available pages in the query possible. And then in future, should you want to update your Darwin universe, you can simply look at the last page of data that you downloaded and increment that value to retrieve the subsequent page to update your universe. There is also a per page parameter that has a default value of 50 Darwin assets per page returned. Uh, this whole query will also return to you the number of pages available as per your per page preference. So let's take a look at what that output looks like when you execute a call to forward slash products. The first key value pair is content, and it's in this key value pair, the value of this key will contain all Darwins that satisfy your query up to the per page limit that you've specified in your query, or if you've used the default of 50. Each time you loop through your page, you'll get that per page number of Darwin's returned to you with the following information, the currency of the underlying Darwin, the migration date of the Darwin, the full product name of the Darwin, reset date, its short name, basically the product name without the digits and the dots, its current status, active, pending, or deleted, and its validation date, the date at which it was available, made available for investment on the platform. The output also returns to you some additional information. A lot of these values may or may not be of use to you depending on your specific implementation, but the one that is most certainly handy for everyone is the total pages uh, key value pair that you see right at the bottom of the output. And it's here that you'll extract the number of pages that are available for your query for you to download. And then it's a case of you looping through a query, specifying the page each time for the number of pages that are currently available that satisfy your query and downloading all of that Darwin information into your local database or of the universe of Darwin assets that you're trying to maintain. It's really quite simple to execute this in Python. So we'll continue from where we left off last time and update the dwx underscore info underscore API uh, class with an additional function to use this endpoint. So as before, same structure to most of the code. And again, please bear in mind that this code is written to educate, so it is necessarily long for that very reason. Feel free to shorten this, optimize it for conciseness in terms of number of lines of code or speed. That's entirely up to you. The purpose of this code is to educate, and hence everything is done in a way so that it looks as closely as possible to pseudocode <laughs> than to actual code. What we're doing with the function initialization is very simply we're doing everything in a try catch loop, executing a call to our preferred endpoint, which is forward slash products in our case. And we've, we're going to format this string with some additional information. As you saw the query parameters. So there's a query string parameter here that takes those three parameters, status, page, and per page allows you to specify those values. You can then supply a page number the per page preference you have, and an iterate variable here that's either true or false, depending on whether you'd like the page that you're requesting, or you'd like to iterate forwards from the page you're requesting up until the total number of pages available to you as per your query. 
you get the first batch and that will allow you to if you're going if your intention is to iterate through and get all the pages into your darwin local database of darwins then you'll need to uh, extract the total pages parameter from the output from the very first call to the endpoint and this is total pages as we saw on the api console once you've extracted the pages it's a case of essentially looping through the content blocks that are returned to you with each json output and once you're done extracting each content block, you can append them to a running list of content blocks that you're maintaining as you're looping through uh, the results of this query. At the end, because you've essentially created a list of dictionary objects, each of which have a key and an associated value, feeding this list of key value pairs, a row's worth of key value pairs directly to a pandas data frame allows you to construct a data frame with the respective columns for each of those values as we saw in the output over here each darwin's currency its migration date product name so on and so forth up until validation date so let's see how this works it's really quite simple to create a query of this nature it's even simpler to simplify this even further if you'd like to optimize the number of lines of code employed or the speed of the implementation and um, uh, let's have a crack at how it works so we'll load our script again create ourselves an info object as we have been so far in these videos for different purposes. As you may remember from previous tutorials that because we've got everything happening in an object oriented fashion, we've got our main DWX API base class executing the authentication functionality. So every time we execute a base, a sub API, all of this happens in the background and we don't have to go about authenticating ourselves, retrieving tokens and such. Now that we have our DWX info API object created, we're going to go ahead and execute the function for getting our Darwin universe. And over here, we're going to supply some parameters. So for this particular query, I'd like to execute um, the query such that the status is set to active only. If you're back testing, you will want active and deleted Darwins because if not, then you incur the risk of survivorship bias in your backtesting. So make sure that if you're conducting backtests that are long, a few years worth, you make sure that your Darwin universe has both active and deleted assets because there may have been points in the Darwin's journey, of course, in the beginning when it was active, but it may subsequently have been closed and deleted by the user. And therefore, if you use only active Darwins, then you are introducing survivorship bias into your backtests, which essentially means that there is a very high probability of your backtests looking very, very good and uh, not necessarily being um, that not necessarily being true. So be mindful of that. And in this case, just for demonstration purposes, we will select active for this query. After that, it's a case of us entering the page from which we'd like to start. Since we don't have anything, we're starting our universe from scratch. We're going to start at page zero. And uh, we'll specify the per page parameter to 50. And because I'm interested in creating the entire universe, saving it locally and updating it in future, I'll set iterate to true. And that's it. Finally, I need to store this somewhere so I can do something with it later. And as we saw in the get Darwin universe function, we are returned a data frame containing all the Darwin assets and their respective information. So let's go ahead and execute this. And uh, it will have received, as we saw in the code, the first 50 Darwins, 50 being specified by my per page, per page preference here. Then it returns to us that there are 82 pages worth of 50 Darwins each that have been found. And we're going to iterate through. And there's a, a smiley I forgot to remove from the comments. So there's that. <laughs> and now we have all 82 pages worth of Darwins that are saved into a data frame that we've named Darwins. And here is the information we got. So there are 4,053 active Darwins that we have received uh, from this query, and each of those is accompanied by all its information, the currency of the underlying Darwin, migration date, when a migration date is zero, it means that the Darwin is native. So if, for instance, you have a query, once you've downloaded your universe and you'd like to execute a subquery within that, saying that, okay, I'd like to, for some reason, I have an interest in uh, just non-migrated Darwins. I want native Darwins only. So over here, you can simply say, find me all 
my uh, all Darwins that have a migration date of zero, which means that the Darwin is native. And this will return to 3,375 Darwins whose migration dates are zero, which implies that there are 3,000. For this query, it means that there are 3,375 active Darwins that have been returned to us as a result of this query. Again, same is the case for all other types of Darwins that you'd, uh, status of Darwins that you'd like to download. Simply specify pending, deleted, or all. All will allow you to maintain a list of all possible statuses of Darwins. And if you have the time, then this would be a preferred option because then you can, you have a bit more flexibility in dealing to the universe later uh, for different purposes. If you want to siphon out active, pending, deleted, but for, abs for absolutely certain, if you need to conduct back tests, you do need active as well as deleted Darwin's at the very least in your universe. Otherwise you would be conducting uh, biased back tests. So be mindful of that. And that is essentially it for our tutorial. So as always, we're going to update the code base on GitHub with this additional code that we've added to the DWX Info API class. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the video comment section below or on the blog or send us an email at info at darwinx.com and provide us with your questions or feedback or any suggestions for future videos as you see fit. Thanks again. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.